A number of people have asked me to explain light meters and specifically the Light Meter Pro app that I've used in a couple of videos. So not only are we going to look at this app today and I'll go through and explain how it works, but I'm also going to calibrate it as an incident light meter. Traditional handheld light meters, which this graphic on this screen attempts to replicate were either reflective light meters or instant light meters. Now a reflective light meter is really similar to the light meter that's built into your digital camera. Light is reflected off of the scene that you're going to photograph. It bounces off the scene through your camera lens onto your sensor. There are Additional sensors that read this light that comes in and calibrates it to an average exposure and then says this is what the camera should be set at. Based on the ISO setting, we recommend this shutter speed and this aperture for optimum exposure. In the days before we had any type of auto exposure built into the camera, we used some type of a light meter to be out in the field to measure the light of the scene. So if we were used this light meter as a reflective light meter, it would be reading the scene here as we see it. We would set our ISO to whatever the ISO is of the film that we have in the camera. Uh, I'm going to set this to 160. That was a common ISO that I used a um, number of years ago. And I also have a bunch of Kodak 160 film that we're going to be doing some portrait work and other work on in the near future. So we'll set this to ISO 160. We press the measure button as it looks at this rating. And then it recommends, for instance, if we were at F5.6 between 125th and a 60th of a second. Um, F4 between 125th and a 250th of a second. With color negative film, we would always rate towards overexposing that film a little bit. With transparency or slide film or a digital camera, I would recommend underexposing a little bit. So if I was shooting color negative film, I would probably shoot at a f5.6 at a 60th. And if I were shooting digital or transparency, f5.6 at a one at 125th. And we should be able to get a good usable image that way. Now the difficulty with a reflective light meter comes in when we have a scene that's unusual. So we're in a snow, um, a snowy landscape where most of everything is white and we do a reflective light meter, it's gonna get a false reading. And let me kind of show you a little more why that is. What I have here is known as an 18% reflectance gray card, or an 18% gray card, or just an 18% card, or a gray card. This gray represents the average gray. If you were to take all lights and darks and everything in exposure and mash them all together, kind of like your histogram, if you were to just take one dead average of your histogram, it would be this reflectance value. This is neutral reflectance. So a light meter is designed to reproduce this color. So if we have an 18% gray card and we use that for our light meter, you can see right now I've got that held right in front of there. So just that, and I do my measure right there. That is neutral gray of light that is striking this card. So if the light that is in the background here behind us is exactly the same as what's striking this card, that is an absolute exposure. Um, in this case, F5.6 at 125th of a second at ISO 160 will get us theoretically a perfect exposure. Your mileage may vary. So if I have a snowy scene and I use my light meter, it's going to read it as much brighter, for instance, than this 18% gray, and I will be underexposed. Um, everything will be really washed out. If I have a really dark scene and I'm trying to preserve those blacks, I'm going to be massively overexposed. Because if I just flip this card over and there's a black, I don't know what this is, but again, I try to do a reflectance reading on this and I measure it out, it's a full two f-stops different. F5.6 at a 30th as opposed to F5.6 at a 125th. And again, it isn't perfect because there is some reflectance value if I point this up or point this down. If I point it up a little bit, we're going to be a little hotter. If I point it down, it'll be a little darker just because of the, of the way the light is hitting this. So there's some brains that have to come into effect. 
That is how a reflective light meter works. That's how it sees the scene. It's trying to represent this scene as an 18% gray or average gray reflectance. The light meter that I usually use when I did portrait photography work was an incident light meter. And actually the light meter would do either reflective or incident light metering. Reflective, again, you can point it at the subject, but if I had a portrait subject and they were against a really dark foliage background, I would have a false reading on that. So I would use an incident light meter, and that's the type of light meter that kind of has a, a white bubble dome on it, and you would actually hold the light meter up on the subject and press your measure button, and that would then get you the incident light meter. We can duplicate that with this light meter. It actually has a reflective setting or an incident setting. And how the Light Meter Pro app works is on my iPhone, I have cameras on the back, and that's what it's seeing right now. It's using one of the cameras on the back, or I have the front facing camera. So if I press an incident light meter, what it actually is gonna do is just read the light meter that's on the front of the camera, this front, this front facing camera on the phone. And it kind of does a milky representation of that, but that's not a true incident meter. It's still the reflective light coming on and pouring onto the subject. So what they recommend you can do is you can take a translucent 35 millimeter canister, cut a slot in it like we've done right here. We cut a slot and flip this over so that it covers up the camera on the phone. And notice I put this little circle around so I know where the camera is. So if I ever use my phone for vlogging, I know to look right there. So I'm looking right at the lens. So we can put this over like this, and then that's gonna diffuse the light coming onto the light meter. And then we hit our measure button, and we're gonna want this to read the same as the reflective light meter. If I have a reflective light meter right here, what's hitting this card, and I measure that out, at 125 ISO, I'm at F5.6 at 125th of a second. So let's slide this on real quick before the sun comes out again. Change this to incident light meter, hit it, and I am off on this by one and two thirds F stops. So let's set up my calibration on this. Um, we're going to rate that later, and what we want to do is settings, and we are going to add one full f-stop, and that's as far as it'll let me go. So when I measure that, I'm much closer than I was. We're still underexposing a little bit because of the how much we can set that. I did eventually manage syncing the incident and reflective light meter options in the My Light Meter Pro app. Maybe because I like the vintage retro style, I really enjoy this app. I've used a couple other apps to do light metering, and this is far and away my favorite one to use. It's attractive, functional, and accurate. What more could you ask for? It's available both for iPhone and Android, and he has a free version available as well. The pro version that I'm using is only $3.99 at the time of filming this video. In the future, I may compare this app to other apps or to an actual photographic handheld light meter. The developer has a second app called F-Tools, and in a future video, I'll be demonstrating and reviewing that app. This app really gets into depth about exposure and depth of field and all kinds of things related to photography, things that will help you become a better photographer. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. That's really important to help make sure more people can see this video. If you're interested in film photography, I've got a playlist link right here that's tailor-made for you. And just for fun, I've got another video right here that I think you'll enjoy. I'm James Fisher. This is Vintage Insight Photography. You take care, and thanks for joining me.